we are right to think that we could be doing better. And there's various reasons for that, which I hope we'll explore during well, well, the programme. What, what do you think they are? Well, I would start with the fact that um, we were totally unprepared for it, and we should have been prepared for it. I mean, the fact was that there was a review of the functioning of the NHS, how it would work in the pandemic. It happened to be an influenza one. Um, it was never published. It was about three years ago. This is the Cygnus report. The, exactly. And um, we didn't do well. In fact, we failed. Now, was there any action there? I didn't see any action. It wasn't even published. So I, the austerity was mentioned. I mean, was the NHS well enough funded to actually take that report seriously and lead in the, uh, when the pandemic took place in really getting on the front foot. We have been playing catch up for this entire pandemic. And I think when it's analyzed, we will see that we didn't do very well. But you're right, we can't, we have to look at the figures carefully and that it's still um, out there exactly where we would be. But it, it's our lack of preparation, which was the start of our trouble. I think very few people would say that the preparation was there to the degree it should have been. But to be completely honest with you, I'm, I'm not here to put blame on anyone. I'm here to say, what can we do to fix this? And my goodness, we need to fix it. And we need to deal with the blockages and we need to listen to what people on the front line are saying to us and take action. And, you know, that's what we've been trying to do. So, for example, around the enormous shortages that still exist in protective equipment. And, you know, we saw that in the Panorama programme that was on recently. You know, there are shortages. We've set out a whole range of things that we think need to be done to deal with that around testing. Obviously, we just missed the target that was set out. I think what Hannah highlighted in her question was that the decisions that have been taken over the last 10 years have left us unprepared. I mean, if you look at social care, for example, we had 120,000 vacancies in social care even before this crisis started. You know, we've been talking about the decisions that were taken in the NHS um, because of a lack of funding, actually. I mean, we, we did have that additional funding in the 2000s. We didn't have additional funding from 2010 onwards. And that meant that other longer range questions like preparedness seem to slip off the agenda. We can't be in that situation again. So you're saying this is again. partly George's fault? Well, I, I don't really care whose fault it was. Or maybe in large part George's fault, I don't know. He's um, sitting think, there, you might have I think, well, the he was chancellor. I think the statistics um, do make the, um, uh, the case very, very clearly. You know, I'm, I'm not going to kind of point the finger, but we had that lack of preparedness and lack of resilience in our public services. But this is also about, of course, households' financial resilience as well, with now approaching 9% of our population due to be unemployed. We entered this crisis with a quarter of families not having even £100 of savings. And, you know, that's after the longest squeeze in living standards that our country has seen for eight generations, the slowest recovery it's seen after a financial crisis um, for hundreds of years. Now, that is something that we cannot repeat.